diversity of land and variety of specialty crops reduces the investor risk versus the single site, single crop investment model. You know, many, many farms cost two, three, four million dollars now. And so, you know, Bill Gates, uh, Elon Musk uh, have, have been public with, you know, the land purchases they've made and they've spent tens of millions. Many large opportunities here to pick the best farms uh, in the best areas with the best crops. Where one person sees a problem, another finds opportunity. While most businesses suffer during the times of crisis, some prosper and become even more resilient. To present one such model, I invited our today's guest. Dear viewers, meet Lyle Jensen, co-founder at Farmland Assets and one of the first clients of Stobox. Today he will tell you about the business they are tokenizing with partners, which I hope can offer great lessons to everybody watching about doing business and investing. Lyle, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Boris, for the introduction. And we look forward to sharing highlights of our farmland asset business plan and security token offering. Great. These are our standard, these are our standard disclosures, uh, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, sharing sharing the presentation. Thank you, Lyle. For those who are new, this is Tobox Interviews, a video series in which we invite industry thought leaders to discuss the cutting edge of Web3 and business model innovation. Now let's proceed to the interview. Lyle, please tell us more about Farmland Assets. So thank you, Boris. As stated, our mission statement is to provide investors with lucrative returns by managing cumulative profits from acquired prime U.S. farmland using the company's unique cumulative diversity advantage. We believe farmland represents an attractive long-term growth investment while simultaneously providing capital protection during times of political and economic turmoil, climate threats, and global pandemic disruptions that we all are currently experiencing today. However, a noted advantage for a farmland asset token investor is they do not need millions of dollars to buy a farm. For a relatively small minimum investment, each farmland token investor will have the opportunity to experience Colorado benefits from a diverse set of profitable specialty crops grown on several thousand acres of historically productive farmland that will be under our management. As shown here, we focus on on several key growth areas, such as specialty crops uh, for health and wellness products, and the current explosive growth of plant-based bioplastics, biochemicals, and biofuels uh, that will provide decades of premium pricing and growing market demand. Let's provide some additional insight on why farmland has, has been and will continue to be one of the best investment asset classes available. It really comes down to primarily being driven by economic laws of supply and demand. On the demand side, it's estimated that by year 2050, the world population will grow to over 10 billion people and will require farmers to produce up to 98% more food to feed the masses. However, on the supply side, urban sprawl continues to take over agricultural land for residential, commercial, and industrial development at alarming rate, putting pressure on the residual farmland to produce more uh, food goods and services. This current dilemma of diminishing farmland acres with increasing food demand will only make the remaining farmland that much more valuable and the harvested crops will be that much more profitable. Farm accumulative diversity advantage and why is it a better model than others? With other farmland investment models, the investor is forced to buy and own one specific piece of farmland and realize profits from one specific crop that could be grown there on a year to year basis. Uh, in doing so, a single property could face a higher probability of drought, fires or pests or disease. Uh, the investor also has to wait until the farm property is sold by the majority of owners, which is typically over 10 years uh, before they can recognize a return on their investment. We think there's a better model. And so with the farmland asset cumulative diversity advantage, 
the investor shares in pro rata harvest profits from the multiple different locations and varied specialty crops that are acquired and accumulated over time. Diversity of land and variety of specialty crops reduces the investor risk versus the single site, single crop investment model. Additionally, the farmland token investor does not have to wait uh, 10 years until the majority of owners decide to sell the farmland to realize the appreciation and land value. The farmland token investor has the freedom to unlock the trading value of their FLA farmland tokens on their timeline, which we all expect will represent the total enterprise value of the cumulative farmland acres uh, under uh, management. As mentioned, farmland asset is also not looking to pursue high volume, low margin commodity crops, such as corn, soybeans, and wheat, which have historically low, lower profit returns. Instead, the farmland invest projected investor results are expected to be significantly higher with a targeted 15 to 18% annual return on, uh, on investment due to the specialty crops producing a higher harvest profit percentage. For example, uh, today in 2022, a typical uh, uh, farmer farming, uh, you know, uh, producing corn or soybeans, uh, he's uh, going to see a, a revenue per acre of somewhere around $800 to $1,000 an acre. When we took uh, take a look at our specialty crops, uh, for example, our, our vegetables uh, is $8,000 an acre, antioxidant berries are $12,000 an acre, uh, medicinal herbs and spices are $15,000 an acre, and industrial hemp can approach $20,000 an acre. So for this, you know, we're basically looking at taking the land that we acquire, and it's productive land to begin with. Uh, it has adequate water, it has adequate sunshine, and we're looking to convert uh, the, these farmlands into a much higher production, higher revenue, higher profitability uh, price per acre, which our farmland investors can, uh, as we accumulate, they can benefit from that. Regarding our targeted diversity of farmland, we have selected five states that are top rated agricultural states in the nation that also our farmland asset founders either live in or know the area very well. Uh, as we've mentioned, soil, sunshine, rainfall sources will be key criteria to our due diligence with also historical harvest results, which can make, far, make so we can make the farms in our short list of acquisition candidates. If we just take a look alone at just at these five agricultural states, you'll see here that there's over 250,000 farms, uh, which represent over 80 million acres in farmland that we can choose from. Uh, an important statistic is that over 60% of this farmland is owned by single operator owners, and the average age of that owner is 62 years old in 2022. Uh, as owners reach retirement age, a large portion of farmland ownership is going to change hands, which will be available for our due diligence consideration. So we have many large opportunities here to pick the best farms uh, in the best areas with the best crops. Just a few highlights uh, on our token offering. Specific details include the investment memorandums for U.S. and non-U.S. Residence is accessible through our website and our dashboard. Uh, this offering is SEC 506 uh, compliant with regulations. It does require U.S. investors to be in, to meet accredited guidelines. Uh, as you can see here, the minimum investment for both U.S. and non-U.S. residents is fifteen thousand U.S. dollars. Our token price is thirty cents uh, per token, but we are, we currently right now are offering an early bird thirty percent discount uh, for the first. 5 million tokens sold down to 21 cents uh, per token. Each token will also include the one share of common B stock, which will be used annually to determine the pro rata sharing of any board of director approved harvest dividend. So in addition to the 30 token offering, we have two additional founding board member seats that are currently open uh, that will have an opportunity for common A shares and the managing parent company 
uh, at $100,000 each. If you're interested in, in uh, picking up one of the last two board seats uh, that are available for the business. Soulbox is our digital security dashboard and, and, and security token advisor. Uh, they've uh, just been excellent to work with, uh, provide the structure and the process to, uh, to get us to this point to where we can go out and market now uh, our STO. Uh, if you do need additional information, you can always contact us or you can go to the Soulbox website uh, and, and uh, ask any questions uh, regarding uh, either Soulbox and or uh, the security token offering. Our farmland asset leadership currently right now is made up of four founding members. As I said, we have two additional board members, uh, founding board members that we want to uh, look at, recruit and add to, uh, to this group. But uh, we have a, 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 just a great seasoned uh, group of individuals that live uh, in Iowa, uh, the Carolinas, in the states that we uh, you know, have, uh, relation, or have relationships with. Uh, Bob Smith, uh, has been uh, in international business uh, for over 30 years, uh, ran uh, three different successful companies, and uh, and has strategic relationships we think will be important uh, in South Carolina with uh, McCall Farms, which happens to be the largest uh, vegetable grower in the United States. And we've already had initial discussions with them on, on the types of vegetables and, and land that they need to uh, support their business plan. Uh, Billy Stiles is a certified uh, uh, agronomist, uh, and he brings uh, just a wealth of knowledge. He uh, speaks nationally and regionally on uh, all kinds of uh, growth areas. Uh, he's uh, already uh, been a licensed grower uh, with, for industrial hemp, which we believe is going to be a very important uh, bio, uh, bioplastic, biofuel product. Bob Kells uh, uh, has had a career in uh, security and intelligence. He's a, a U.S. Marine that has several deployments in the Middle East and Southeast, Southwest Asia, which has given him a host of uh, uh, strategic connections in, the, uh, in that area of, of the world. Uh, myself, I've been uh, uh, in, in the business and CEO or presidential levels of six, seven different companies uh, that I've either taken public or uh, have done turnarounds uh, the private companies, uh, have experience in multi-site management, uh, startups, joint ventures, and have, have done quite a bit of M&A work. So I, I know what we need to do for the due diligence. So I grew up on a family farm in Iowa. Uh, uh, here in Iowa, uh, much like Bob has connections uh, with vegetable growers in uh, South Carolina, uh, the number one antioxidant berry is called an aronia berry. And uh, Iowa is the number one producer of that uh, antioxidant uh, berry crop. So, uh, good good management group to uh, uh, that has hands-on knowledge in in the different areas that we're focused on. So, let's summarize and recap you know, why we believe this uh, our value proposition is worthy of, of consideration. Uh, first and foremost, law of supply and demand will drive land appreciation and profitable food prices. Uh, uh, compared to uh, you know the stock market or the crypto market, which uh, we have historically seen now, you know ups and downs. Uh, the uh, the value of land and the value of farmland is has ridden through this without you know any wild upswings, uh, but also no wild downswings. So it's a safe safe investment, and because of the uh, of the shrinkage of, of the available land, the demand for food. We don't. We do not see that model, you know, changing at all. So it's a strong appreciation of the farmland, uh, which has been happening for decades. The growing availability I've, I've mentioned is that there's going to be a huge change in ownership. A lot of farmland, as the uh, single-family owner uh, retires, many times the uh, the kids, uh, uh, the next generation, don't want to work uh, on a farm or work that hard. Uh, they rather, would rather see their father sell the farm and uh, use the uh, the funds in, in, uh, in, a, in a different way. So uh, that's a great opportunity coming up. Uh, we've talked a lot about our diversity model, why we believe reducing investor risk with our end products and having much higher volume per acre is a smart way to go with our business plan. 
And we've got great strategic relationships. Our partnership with uh, with uh, Stobox and putting together our FLA token and this whole tokenization area uh, is going to have an area where, uh, again, there's flexibility, there's freedom of, of being able to trade when you want to trade uh, as opposed to being locked into a, a fixed number of years before you can sell the land. And then just overall, the global sustainability. We have uh, uh, this whole area of emergency plant-based, uh, the, the whole world of biofuels, uh, carbon uh, sequestration through planting. Uh, this is all very important. And so for you, know, you as, uh, as a potential investor, uh, this is the type of business plan uh, where you can be proud of where you're investing uh, because this will not only help uh, the rest of your life, but it will be you know, something that will be a generational benefit for years to come. So uh, for more follow-up questions, so we have a lot of detail, uh, as I said, on our website, uh, the information memorandums uh, are on our website that you can go uh, take a look at uh, you know, whether you're a US resident or a non-US resident. Uh, here's our website uh, you know, contacts and our, our email contacts. Uh, Jason is our interface uh, at Stolox. So uh, again, multiple ways here to, for you to be able to contact us. And uh, we look forward to your interest. We look forward to answering your questions. And uh, we believe this is worthy of your consideration. So thank you. Lyle, thank you for the presentation. It was extremely interesting and entertaining. And I love the fact that your business model is very well thought out it isn't just written yesterday on the back of the envelope but a lot of work went into understanding it which is felt in the level of detail to which you go when speaking about it and i love how the, your presentation of your leadership team and the experience that you have in each of the critical functions for for this business so again given the importance of executive team for the overall success i feel this is a very important fact for investors to keep attention to and for founders look in this video to consider whether they have key executive roles filled with the right people as farmland asset does so coming to the to the questions that i would like to ask it would be great if you could speak about the impact of the current food crisis on your business. How does it change your returns, your financial projections, your plans, and the overall attractiveness of the offering? Well, I think well, it's a good question, Boris. And obviously, with uh, you know the invasion of uh, that Russia has uh, uh, you know sadly decided to take with Ukraine. Uh, I mean, you know, it, uh, food security. Uh, lack of food is, is actually headline news today, as we know that we can't, uh, uh, unfortunately, we're having a very difficult time exporting, uh, you know, good productive crops out of Ukraine uh, around the world. So uh, that's put, uh, you know, that plus the oil embargoes uh, has put a, a different type of economic pressure uh, almost on every country in the world. From our standpoint, for our, uh, for our business model, I mean, we, you know, uh, it has not affected uh, the uh, value of, of the United States farmland. Uh, we still have, you know, millions of acres uh, under, you know, under uh, planting right now for this year's harvest. Uh, and uh, food prices are uh, obviously higher than they were a year ago. Uh, we believe, you know, over time that will, you know, correct itself hopefully, but uh, it just gives us the opportunity to uh, take a look and say, you know, even in the hard times that we're, living with today and the unacceptable, you know, political, geopolitical situations we're living in, uh, farmland is retaining its value and it has the ability to, to produce a product that the world needs. And, uh, and we have, when you have good productive land, you know, you can pick the crops that you believe, uh, you know, provide the best benefit, overall benefit, uh, if need, need to be in a, in a critical security, land security area, we could change the crops if we needed to, but uh, right now we believe our plan uh, is rock solid and it, uh, it, it not only it survives, uh, you know, the critical challenges that we're seeing in today's market. It's definitely important to offer the asset that is sustainable in such kind of situations. 
and the formal assets is it seems to be standing the test of time and test of crisis and i like the fact that what you're doing is not only surviving the crisis but actually helping to relieve it by investing in farmland investing in food production that your business is not only about making money but also making world a better place by solving the problem of, of food production and food availability which is going to become even worse in, in the coming decades and also you mentioned about your efforts on biofuel and sustainability so it would be great if you could speak a bit more to our viewers about your efforts in ESG and and the sustainability sector? Sure. But, uh, well, I, I spent my last uh, 10 years in the, uh, in the world of uh, sustainability, uh, biofuels, uh, carbon capture, carbon reduction, which uh, all we, you know, we, we do need to focus on that from the standpoint of our climate. Uh, you know, we're living that uh, literally today with uh, 100 degree temperatures around the world. But uh, so uh, it's an area I'm very comfortable with uh, that uh, I've spent a lot of time in. Uh, you know, just you know, some examples. Uh, you know, the you know, in the world of, of plastics, you know, we, we see the pictures of all the plastic, you know, uh, you know, coming on shore from the oceans, and uh, it just uh, does not degrade. Uh, and and there's you know, right now the you know the industrial hemp plant that we have uh, a lot of experience with. Uh, it's made up of uh, of a material called cellulose that you can make plastic out of. And uh, so right now we're working on products with our hemp base. Uh, they're uh, three times stronger than plastic. They're lighter than plastic, uh, but more importantly, they're biodegradable and they're non-toxic uh, compared to our, the plastic uh, that's uh, made today. Uh, so that's, that's an area. And another part of the hemp plant, uh, we're working with a, uh, Georgia uh, developer on industrial hemp products uh, that's uh, working on making uh, certain parts of industrial hemp into renewable diesel. And uh, we found out that it, uh, for a relatively technically available uh, process, we can actually make uh, biodiesel out of a, a renewable diesel draw, out of drop and a drop into uh, the same standards of a diesel, a fossil based diesel. So that's one that's going to need acres and acres and acres of of uh, industrial hemp as we go forward. Uh, Europe is on, is, has taken a lead on using beets, sugar beets, uh, to replace the uh, fossil uh, glycol and, and propylene uh, glycols for things such as uh, oh, antifreeze, uh, de-icing of airplanes, uh, polyester plastics, polyester textiles. All of that can be, uh, again, we can reduce the carbon footprint of fossil fuel by moving to those type of plant-based products. So uh, again, we think, you know, we, we know where this uh, technology is gonna lead us for the decades to come. Uh, because it's plant-based, it's gonna need acres and acres of, of product. And, uh, and we believe again, as, as I said, that more and more investors uh, that I talk to uh, ask the question, what does your product do to the sustainability of the climate? And and uh, you know, do you have environmental uh, and social uh, you know objectives uh, you know to your business plan? And we we have one of the best. I mean, plants absorb CO two uh, naturally. Uh, believe it or not, industrial hemp uh, between its root system and its plant actually absorbs more carbon than it than it creates. And uh, so these are these are areas that we, we believe that uh, we have to be responsible uh, you know for the environment. Uh, we also uh, see more and more investors that want to know uh, that they're investing their money uh, into management teams and into business plans, you know, that will uh, not degrade the environment going forward. Thank you for this explanation. I recently read that about one third of uh, largest private equity investors invest according to ESG criteria. So it's definitely taking off in the investment world, probably even more so among individual investors who are less constrained with investment thesis. So it's, it's great to see that investors are incentivizing businesses to become even more, even greener. And this overall agenda is taking off. One point that seems to be overlooked 
it, the, the part of the social good that you create is not only by fostering the conservation of the environment and going against global warming and food crisis, but also in terms of the economic equality, because what you do is you make the asset, that land which previously was available only to a select few, more broadly available to a broad range of investors. So uh, I wonder how much more available do you make it? So you, what is your minimum investment? And uh, what is the minimum investment in farmland if you choose other way to purchase it instead of going with uh, farmland assets? I mean, you know, the minimum the, the minimum investment will really depend uh, on the farms that we uh, the due diligence we take a look at. It really will depend on the area, the region, and uh, uh, the experience of the crops uh, that will grow the best. You know, I mean, we in, in the areas that we know. We, for example, uh, there's a uh, you know probably uh, you know certain crops have to have a winter freeze. So. Uh, you would grow those in Minnesota and Iowa as opposed to uh, in Georgia or uh, South Carolina where you don't have hard freezes. So uh, so we we have a wide range of capabilities. It, it, uh, it uh, will be, you know, farmland, uh, you know, that's uh, right for, you know, the, the, pro the product that we're looking at. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we'd like to avoid, you know, uh, as an example, you know, there are other competitive farmland investment uh, uh, opportunities out there, uh, two or three of them are focused only in California, and uh, it's a single crop, uh, single site uh, type opportunity. And unfortunately, we're seeing that some of those, uh, whether it be vineyards or almond farms or whatever, uh, are, are being succumbed to uh, drought and fire risk. And uh, so you can make your investment and it may be good for a year or two, but maybe it's not good for the you know, for 10 years, uh, especially with the global warming and the situation we're seeing acres and acres be at risk in California. So we've tried to avoid that type of large farm purchases or geographical areas that we believe have investor risk. And uh, uh, we, you know, we're, you know, I believe in due diligence, and I believe that we will, you know, do a good job of matching up. Uh, some some farms may be 100 acres. Another farm we look at maybe uh, a thousand acres. It's a, it really will depend on a on our due diligence discipline to uh, uh, bring bring those into the cumulative ownership uh, for the for the best return that we can get. That's a great point. So basically, what you're saying is that it is one thing to simply purchase a plot of land and start farming. And uh, here you, for example, reduce the price, let's say, tenfold. But uh, what, what you really want to do is you want to have a protection through diversification. And for this, you need more than one plot of land. You need to have operation in multiple states. And here, probably it would cost for a person to start such operations at least hundredfold more than investing in farmland assets with your minimum investment of 15,000. So basically what you're doing is you're making it much cheaper and easier to build a diversified portfolio of farmland in the US. Yeah, very much so. Yes. I mean, you know, it, uh, it, it's not, you know, uh, you know, many, many farms cost two, three, four million dollars now. And so, you know, if you're going to, uh, you know, if they're going to split that amongst just a handful of people, uh, you know, the, that's that's a whole different ballpark we're trying to give. We're trying to give everybody that that's not necessarily a multimillionaire. We're giving them uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, to benefit from the uh, from the harvest of the land. Uh, you know, these are uh, you know Bill Gates, uh, Elon Musk uh, have have been public with you know the land purchases they've made, and they've spent tens of millions uh, of dollars. Uh, you know, for you know, some of the same reasons. Well, we're, we're giving. We're giving uh, you know our farmland uh, token investor that same type of uh, opportunity to to participate. It just happens to be you know at a uh, pro rata level that allows a lot of people to uh, uh, benefit from farmland ownership that uh, wouldn't be able to uh, prior to. Okay, thank you. It would be great if you could speak about the returns on investing in farmland assets to provide investors with a financial picture of this offering. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, as we talked about, we're uh, uh, you know, it really there's a lot of farmland that 
if you study this and do your due diligence, you'll have you'll you'll read a lot about something called commodity crops, and then you'll read about specialty crops. Uh, and as we mentioned, uh, commodity crops are you know high volume, uh, lower margin, usually three to four percent cash uh, harvest profits uh, for uh, you know for a thing of products like corn, soybeans, wheat, cotton uh, that have you know that really are. Uh, you don't have a large control over the the pricing of it. It's it's uh, you know shipped all over the world, and so world economics drives the price. We've seen fairly over the years some wild you know wild changes in in what happens to those type of crops. Uh, uh, it be, to make a profit, uh, usually you have to farm thousands of acres, uh, so it is a high volume proposition. And when you do that you'll end up spending several million dollars on equipment, uh, large tractors, large planters, large combines. Uh, uh, so that's that's a whole market. And, and, and again, you know, the, you know, there, there is that type of opportunity. We don't believe that's where, you know, the focus should be uh, to, to provide uh, the opportunities that we see. So we're, we're looking uh, again at the smaller, you know, the smaller opportunities, the lower investment uh, does not, take uh, hardly any of the capital equipment, you know, that would be required of the large areas. So when we take a look, and I, as I shared with you, the, uh, you know, the price price per acre, of, let's just start with revenue, that uh, we're going to, you know, not look at the $1,000 an acre type crops. We're going to be looking at the 8000 10000 12000 15000 $18,000 per acre, uh, especially crops and bio-based bio uh, you know, plant-based uh, crops for biofuels. So uh, the uh, there is higher costs associated with that. But again, if you're making uh, three to four percent on a thousand dollars an acre, uh, you're making less than fifty dollars an acre. Uh, our modeling, we have, uh, uh, you know, some, I think it's three, three or four university models on the specialty crop area uh, that we've looked at and we're using in our business plan, uh, so that. Uh, instead of making three to four percent, you can make eight to twelve percent uh, on your K, on your cash harvest. Uh, but you're making uh, you know rounded off ten, make ten you know ten percent on a, a ten thousand dollar revenue. Your profit is a thousand dollars an acre, you know, versus potentially fifty dollars an acre on on uh, corn or soybeans. So uh, the uh, our, our business model uh, that you'll see in the PPM. Uh, it has got a target range of 15 to 18 uh, percent. We break that down between the, you know, the, the annual harvest, we believe will be 8 to 12 percent. The land value historically has been at least 6 percent as a minimum annually uh, for, and as much as high as 8 to 8 to 9 percent. So uh, that's uh, we're, we're taking a look at the, you know, 15 to 18 percent window it could be it could be higher. Uh, it's unlikely that it would go much lower uh, than that based upon the history of land appreciation as well as the uh, the higher value crops that we plan on on harvesting 15 to 18 percent is an amazing return and i thank you for this breakdown and especially given that it can go even higher if the food prices rise or if you as you previously mentioned select the best performing plots of land using your experience so it definitely seems quite promising lyle Thank you for this interview. I don't have further questions. Thank you for the presentation. I hope this was interesting and exciting for everybody voting, watching, for founders, for investors looking at that. If you're interested in checking out the farmland assets and the, the work that Lyle is doing, go to farmlandassets.com. We will leave the link in the description to this video. And uh, I thank you for the attention. Please remember that even though if I am personally excited about this project, it doesn't mean that this is a good investment fit for you. So this video isn't an investment advice and you need to consult your investment advisors and think carefully about your portfolio strategy. So just make sure that you're making wise investment decisions. Overall, and I hope that watching such videos, looking at different models, at different client that we have, will help you to understand what great opportunities exist out there on the market and start, start making better decisions in business and investing. So I thank you for attention and see you in the next episode. Lyle, thank you that you came to us. Thank you.